Our topic today is thinking outside the square. And we're going to look at a game from the Tata Steel Masters Tournament at Vaikanze, being held this year, 2019. And it's a game from round 9, played on the 23rd of January, which is today. And I got the position from chess24.com. Playing the white pieces is Ratyabov, and playing the black pieces is Fedosev. Now, um, it's a king and pawn ending, generally pretty simple. And black is a pawn up, but um, it's hard to see how black can win. Well, he plays a pretty obvious move, which is this. And, of course, white takes it. Now, here's where black has to think outside the square. The most obvious move, and seemingly forced, is to take the pawn with the king. Because what's the point of leaving white with a passed pawn here? However, Fedosev, the Russian, thought outside the square and he played a move that must have been a big surprise to his grandmaster opponent. He played a move that I would probably never have seen over the board and when I did see it on Chess24, it took me a little while to figure out why it was good. So you might like to pause the video and um, think about Black's options here. Thinking outside the square, an unusual, unexpected move, not recapturing the pawn, which you can work out recapturing the pawn leads to a draw because white captures here and their pawns queen um, at the same time. So there's no winning that way. But black has a very surprising move right outside the square. So you can pause the video if you want to try and think about it just before I show it. And the move is king here. Like I say, it took me quite a long time looking at this to try and figure out why this is a good move, why it isn't just a stupid move, because you're leaving white's pawn here. But um, the justification of it will be seen in a minute. So white captures, and now the race starts. So white is just half a move behind black. Now, if um, black queens, then white's going to queen with check. So there's certainly no winning that. But black has an unexpected, well, not quite as unexpected as the other move, but this is the move that he had to see when he played the king to d6. He plays his king here, because his king is actually within the square. When it's sitting here, his king is within the square. Here's the square of this pawn. If you're sitting within the square of the pawn, you know you can catch it. And um, he's also within the square of this pawn with the move he can get into the square. So that's that's um, getting in, into the square in chess terms, but the original move king d6 is very much outside the square. So he goes here and now he's covering the queening square. And here's the rub. If white goes forward, black queens with check and then he can check again from here, and the king is forced away, and he wins the pawn. So going back, if white instead decides to push this pawn, well, black can easily go over there, and he's only um, wasted his time. So there we have it, thinking outside the square. Of course, this has many applications in life. For me, it can be done by taking a pause before making a decision or 
taking an automatic type of action. I can do this, for example, by going for a walk around the block, having a shower, or sleeping on it overnight. In the end, though, I think you're always drawing on experience, either yours or someone else's. Fedosev has here given us a striking example. There it is.